swing and a fly ball towards the line and deep to left field at the track looking up and it is fair and it is good a home run the late ruling comes in Esteban Tresgallo ends it defying the wind defying the odds defying time mother nature the hurricanes victorious they do it in the bottom of the 14th inning. I was looking for a fastball. I was looking for a good pitch, and a good pitch to hit, and I got it. It was fastball up, and I put a good swing to it. I thought it was going to fall, like, like straight off the, bat, off the bat, and like foul, like no way. Like the wind, like it's pretty rough, but uh, when it snuck out, I'm just like super excited, and I saw my teammates out, out on the home plate. It was, it was incredible. Esteban Tresgallo's walk-off home run in the middle game of the series against North Carolina had guys jumping right off this bench inside the Hurricanes dugout. Hello everybody, I'm Joe Zagacki and welcome to Hurricane Game Day. The University of Miami coming off a three game sweep against third ranked North Carolina propels Miami to sixth in the rankings this week. For the University of Miami, the sweep of Carolina was the first time that Miami has swept the top three team since 2001. It was a great win for us. I'm telling you, it would have been a crushing blow if we would have lost that game. And, and I don't know what it would have done to our team because we left 17 guys on base. We had so many opportunities to win that game. I was, I mean, I would have been crushed, I guarantee you. And I was crushed almost just because, I was, as a coach, I was concerned, like, why can we not score a run? You gotta make something happen to score a run with 17 guys on base. And, and uh, amazing thing is kind of the same thing happened to, to North Carolina on Sunday. They left 14 guys on base in nine innings where we left 17 guys on base in 14 innings. We played well, you know, we, we have been inconsistent going up into the series and then playing against North Carolina was a huge opportunity for us to jump back up in the polls. Our pitching was outstanding. Our defense, I thought, played well. Our hitting was, uh, you know, the first night I was very excited to see when we scored eight runs and we only struck out a few times, which was the best we've done all year. Uh, we still got to work on some things. We're still striking out a little too much, leaving too many guys on base, not getting them in from third base with one out. but. Uh, Overall, as a team, we played well. It was a great, great opportunity for us to jump up in the rankings, which we did. EJ, congratulations, ACC Pitcher of the Week. How did that make you feel? Feels good, you know, just uh, getting a little recognition for my work. You know, it's always it's always a good thing. But uh, definitely, it was a team, uh, overall team accolade. I would say just a bunch of guys made great plays, stayed in the game. Uh, you know, overall focus intensity was there, and you know, thank to, thank God, uh, Trish Guy got that big hit. The Hurricanes closer, E.J. Encinosa, with seven saves, a nice earn run average of 2.50. E.J. and the rest of the Hurricanes on the road this weekend to play Virginia Tech, where Miami must maintain their consistency. Every game's big. Every game's big. I don't care whether it's a, a weekend game ACC or, or a midweek game against whoever we may, we may be playing. But going to Virginia Tech uh, is a place that uh, you know we're looking forward to going and playing. Uh, they just put in a new playing surface. They put in uh, the new turf field, which uh, you know looks good on field and or on TV, excuse me. And we're looking forward to going up and playing those guys. They got a good club and got a few Miami guys, and, uh, and I'm sure they'll be ready for us. You know, I, I do feel that this team has a grasp of the idea that you know we need to be in the uh, number one seat at the end of the regular season. It's huge for you know ACC play. Going into the AC tournament, you want to get that by. So it's a little pressure, less less games. So um, for that part, 
It's a huge uh, advantage for us right now. We need to keep the steam rolling going on. As soon as we go to Virginia Tech, you know, we make sure that we keep these wins going. And then uh, Florida State's coming real soon, so it's exciting. Still to come here on Hurricane Game Day, we'll sit down with head coach Jim Morris. Also, Gino Damari joins us, as well as closer EJ Encinosa. All that and more right here on Hurricane Game Day on CSS. But it moved us up drastically in all the polls. It moved our RPI up big because North Carolina's RPI is still two or three. So they played a good schedule and they played very well. Hurricane Game Day is brought to you by the Florida Fan Game. Think the Canes are Florida's number one fans? Prove it at Facebook.com slash share a little sunshine. Back on Hurricane Game Day with University of Miami head coach Jim Morris right here on CSS. This week the Hurricanes go on the road and take on the Hokies of Virginia Tech coming off a sweep of North Carolina and that has propelled the University of Miami to sixth in the country coach, your highest ranking of the year. Congratulations on that. No, that's great and that's you know what we want to be. We want to be in the top eight and the higher the better of course and it uh, just helps your opportunities in the NCAA tournament to, to get in the tournament, to host a regional, to host a super regional, all the advantages. So it's very, very important. Plus our, our RPI right now is seven, I think it is, in the country. So, uh, you know, both of those things are good signs. It's a good time to remind people that RPI and rankings really matter when it comes to the regional and the super regional. Absolutely. I mean, the seedings are set up basically on that, and you get you the opportunity to host both of them if you're in the top eight. The weekend sweep of North Carolina, how important was that for your ball club? Well, it's great. I mean, it's a great, great weekend for us. Uh, North Carolina's ranked number three in the country. Huge wins. It moved us in the USA Today poll, ABC poll, which, uh, you know, you, I think this is the one they look at more than any is personally, but it moved us from 13 to six. But it moved us up drastically in all the polls. It moved our RPI up big because North Carolina's RPI is still two or three. So they played a good schedule and they played very well. The last time you had a sweep of a top three team was 2001. And you know what happened that year? It's a good year, I heard. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. No, I remember that in, in particular at Florida State. That was a big series. And, uh, and we played well. And it was always, it's always exciting when you go to Tallahassee. Something always happens. So that was a crazy one. Uh, this North Carolina series, you got great pitching. Uh, EJ Encinosa was spectacular for you on Saturday night. But so were the starters. Well, you're right, A.J. got pitcher of the week, so that was great. Came in, expecting him to get three outs, and he ends up pitching five innings, is that correct? Five seven. innings, seven innings. A lot of innings, a lot of pitches, through 85 pitches, I know that. Where was a lot for that situation, and, and uh, but got a huge win. I mean, after, uh, after that first inning, he's, he's really settled down and just absolutely shut him down. And, of course, on Friday, I think Erickson threw, again, as good a game as he's thrown since he's at Miami. And Whaley threw great starting on, on Saturday. Uh, gave up two runs early, hit and run a couple of hits, and boom, and, and he shut them down. And Ewing, you know, we get a shutout on Sunday, two shutouts, Friday night and Sunday. We get two shutouts, and really Ewing didn't throw as well as he's been throwing because he walked seven guys and he struck out nine. From the fourth inning on, he had trouble getting his fastball over. The only thing he did is kind of set it up his breaking ball with his fastball and threw a lot of breaking balls over the plate. You scored runs in a variety of ways, which also is good. You hit a home run on Friday night, and then Sunday you scored a run or two without getting the ball out of the infield. Well, you you know you got to win. We're we're uh, got to find ways to win. Got to score, find ways to score runs. Score Trish Gallo's walk off home run on Saturday night was a was a very very exciting win and a big thing for him and a base hit or a home run or, or a walk or a push bun or whatever it may be, you got to find a way to win. And, and we found a way this weekend in particular was pitching and defense and we got some runs uh, scattered out. What's been uh, interesting to me also has been the way that you've had to maneuver your lineup. Guys have played all different positions because of injuries and they're responding to it. Brad Figger started at first base, now he's at third base. Trescaio went over there. Steven Perez has been at second, he's been at short. Ty Palmer, I think, has been everywhere except behind the plate. So your guys are responding to your commands. Well, you know, we work hard in moving guys around and, and practice to learn different positions uh, in case of injuries, in case a guy's struggling, in case you got a pinch hitter, all those scenarios to try to cover that. So uh, 
Uh, most of those guys have, have practiced at those positions other than Palmer because we've had him all over the place, which means he's a good athlete and he can run and throw and do some things. And he's done a good job, you know, uh, moving to first base, which he hadn't played, moving to the outfield, which he hadn't really played. And uh, so he's done a good job. You still have a battle on your hands in the conference. Four teams are ranked in the top uh, 25 inside the ACC. In your division, you're in front of North Carolina, but then there's Virginia right there as well. So uh, no time to, to rest or let up. Yeah, I mean, every weekend's big. I mean, you look at the ranked teams, but the unranked teams can beat you too. They're good, and you got to be ready for every single game. But they all have good pitching, and they play solid defense. And most of those clubs that are toward the bottom are our teams has lost close games. They haven't gotten that big hit when it counts, and, uh, and that's why they're down toward the bottom. But they've been in all the games. I could make a World Series out of Miami, North Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia Tech. They've all all been World Series teams. Right. Well, they are, and and that's 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 good. It makes it a it makes it a tough league every year. Okay, this week on the road, three more at Virginia Tech. Uh, you go into the series, winners of four straight in the conference. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. And uh, you know, big weekend. I mean, Virginia Tech's very solid. They can run. They try to put pressure on you. They can bunt. Uh, the pitchers throw strike, and, and they're at home. So, you know, that gives them that advantage there. So we're looking forward to going and playing. And, uh, you know, every weekend's a challenge for us. You mentioned a couple of guys maneuvering in the lineup. And uh, Chance Mack had to play right field and left field. He drove in three or four runs for you over the weekend. So he responded to an opportunity. We well, did. You know, he started early. And he struggled a little bit. So he was out of the lineup, and he just kept working hard. Chance works as hard as anybody on the team. He's got a good, solid swing. And uh, we were surprised he, he really struggled for you know, an extended period of time. But when he got his chance, he got back in there, he got it done. And now he's hitting fifth in the lineup, so he's doing a really good job. Steven Perez misses the first two games of the Carolina series. Medeiros fills in nicely for him at short, and then on Sunday he's over at second. Right. Well, you know, we're just trying to find the right match, you know, and if we can keep winning and doing that, then, you know, you'd like to think by now you've found the right, right lineup, but due to injuries, we've had to move people around so much and uh, uh, try to prepare the team. But hopefully by tournament time, you know, <laughs> there a little bit before then, really, so you can get it set and guys can feel comfortable because it causes problems, just like a, a fly ball between. Uh, Perez is short, Madero's is second, very easy pop-up, and there was some communications issue, and they almost bumped, and, you know, I can drop a ball, and it's just because they haven't played those positions together. On the other hand, how important is it that you're at this point of the season, and Erickson and Whaley, your two, two top starters, have been really giving you about the same thing every time out? Well, they are. I think both of them throwing 50 innings, and, and they've done very solid. You expect them to go deep in the game, and that's something that, uh, you know, as a coach you like. They work fast. They throw strikes. They... They do a good job of the little things, holding runners and fielding positions. So all those things are, are good things. And uh, Erickson, of course, being our, our cap, one of our captains, is is a guy that uh, you know provides a lot of leadership too with uh, the entire team. We won't skip over Virginia Tech. Florida State is out there on the horizon. They're number one. You're number six. So we got a nice collision, or could be headed for a big collision here in a, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, that won't be a first time. So, uh, you know, it's always a big series. We still got to work on some things. We're still striking out a little too much, leaving too many guys on base, not getting them in from third base with one out. Hurricane Game Day is brought to you by the Florida Fan Game. Think the Canes are Florida's number one fans? Prove it at Facebook.com slash Share a Little Sunshine.